This is the second in a series of video blogs in which members of the Southern Africa Climate Finance Partnership reflect on their experiences of participating in and delivering the past six years of the programme. The series seeks to explore the lessons from knowledge brokering within a community of practice for climate finance mobilisation. The first video blog attempts to define the problem space which novel climate finance practitioners in Southern Africa have come to operate in. In the second instalment, we try to unpack some of the successes and challenges from the first two phases of the programme. To understand the structure and activities of the programme, please refer to the reports published on the SACFP Knowledge Portal. When we embarked on the journey, we, we didn't know what lay ahead. But I must say that uh, through uh, our interactions with the Southern African Climate Finance Partnership, with other institutions which were already accredited, that uh, helped us a lot. Personally, I didn't know the Development Bank of Namibia, the Development Bank of Botswana. I had not had any interactions with them. Uh, but as a result of the connections that we then got through the Southern African Climate Finance Partnership, we got to know about these other organizations. So we began to talk with them, interact with them, and share notes. When we then started the process of accreditation, we were already aware of where we were going to face problems and how we we're going to resolve them. The first um, uh, climate finance forum in Namibia came at a very appropriate time. I was um, new in the bank, I just joined the bank, um, starting to navigate issues of climate finance, understanding what they meant and my role in the process. So that uh, forum came at the right time in that uh, I was then able to interact with um, various people who were on the same road. Um, I was particularly happy to then meet with colleagues from the Development Bank of Southern Africa, whom I already knew were accredited. So they gave me tips, hints in terms of what it means, uh, how the journey is like, what is involved. I would say it really opened my eyes, it opened my mind in terms of uh, what we were supposed to achieve as a bank. It felt, it felt reassuring. It was, uh, sorry to use this example, but it was like being part of a support group. Um, there are people that are slightly ahead of you and those that are coming behind you in terms of the journey with uh, GCF accreditation. So it was uh, being able to learn from fellow uh, practitioners in terms of how they've been able to manage it in the process. And in a way, you begin to feel uh, comfortable and a bit more uh, confident in facing the GCF. After the, the training, we exchanged uh, email addresses. And it was very easy uh, post that training to be able to shoot out an email or send a text message to colleagues across the region. And uh, within, within minutes, you have the perspective that you probably didn't have. And you're able to now get back to the GCF and get one action item uh, done sort of thing. I developed personal relationships as well as the institutional relationships which helped us to move the accreditation journey much more swiftly. Things that I believe should have taken us two, three months to do, we were able to do in about a month because of um, tips we were getting. It really made our lives a lot easier. It makes you feel like you belong to a group. It's very difficult just to, for you alone in your, in your corner, but being in a community of other institutions where um, everybody is pursuing the same thing. We form new relationships. We don't feel alone. I, I say that and that's an emphatic uh, no. We know there are a lot of practitioners within the region that we can, at the drop of the heart, reach out to and we'll get the help that we, that we need. Establishing trusted relationships between the champions and the SACFP delivery team was identified as a vital foundation upon which the future successes of the program were built. I think I had a very good relationship um, with the team. 
um, they're always available um, at a call at a moment's notice. Um, what I love about the team is the, the lack of uh, formality in terms of our desire to discuss issues um, or to pick their brain on a certain uh, topic. Um, I can call on WhatsApp. And I found that to be very uh, useful um, you know, as we move along in terms of being able to get information and get answers around uh, specific issues that uh, we are dealing with. And I found them to really be passionate. I found them to be very interested um, in ensuring that Botswana does indeed get a local institution um, accredited to the GCF and plays a more meaningful role in the entire climate finance um, landscape. And so that has been very appreciated. It's a very great uh, personal relationship. You, you could reach out to the team, whether it's uh, a WhatsApp call, a WhatsApp uh, voice note, to try and clarify some of the uh, issues and you know you get you get feedback. Every clarification gave us a different perspective about how we're going up uh, about the, the, the accreditation and uh, this resulted into a very uh, informative and value-add uh, relationship and engagement with the SSN. By the end of the first phase of SACFP um, we had established some very solid relationships and those relationships yielded a, a kind of reciprocal sharing of knowledge. And whilst these trusted relationships were strongest with an emerging core group of community members, the legitimacy of the program was built on the trust with several key entities who had been informed and involved from the outset. And building trust within the national designated authorities was preeminent and the focus of what we were doing. And I think off that, that basis, we've been able to open a lot of doors in then working with the local entities. If the National Designated Authority believes in us, then often uh, the local institutions are often willing to, to then enter into quite trusted discussions. Now I can speak with confidence. I can interact with anyone at any level to discuss issues to do with climate finance and discuss issues to do with environmental and social issues in climate finance discourse. The SFCFP has refined my focus and interest in banking. I've been passionate about investment banking in general, but I'm now more particularly interested in climate change issues. So at an individual level, I now understand and I'm a bit more clear in terms of the hazards that we get to face and how to solve them. So it is refined in terms of my career, in terms of understanding the areas in which I'm more passionate about now. And even outside the career, there are things that our communities are dealing with, which you just watch over the news and you just pass on. But now you get to pay a bit more attention. You try to think, what can I do to be able to support? So at an individual level, I'm always pushing myself to then say, what more can I do outside what I'm professionally expected to do? Because these issues are real, these issues are here to stay, and we need to be able to take care of the community we live. We know that knowledge is power. So with all the, the new learning that I got, um, it has actually strengthened my capabilities in terms of shaping or giving direction in terms of how we could uh, address the issues of climate finance. So I recently enrolled, I was always passionate in terms of advancing my academic life, and I recently enrolled for a PhD in business and management at the University of Zambia. And where we are now is to try and develop areas of interest. I intend to contribute and try to do the best I can to understand the risks that our continent faces and the challenges that we continue to face, particularly in terms of climate reporting and disclosures, which is an area that I am now passionate about. At a personal level, I intend to contribute to the Board of Knowledge and be able to do things that can assist and be able to make sure that we as a continent, we have greater capacity in terms of dealing with the climate risks that we face because they are here to stay. And all we can do is to try and manage them and avoid further deterioration of, of our place. It's been a long journey to convince everybody that this is the route that the institution needs to take. But I think climate finance really speaks for itself because it's not just about saving the planet. Um, 
It's also about implementing projects that also do have an economically uh, viable return in the future. And so that part really is what balances the equation out very nicely. The third video blog in the series explores how the SACFP team came to develop the theory of change further and identify and deliver activities to address emerging needs as practitioners began to expand their focus from accreditation to implementation of climate finance.